I'm Jessica Shea. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Before we begin, if you guys could give this video a big thumbs up, let's get right on into it. What was the most challenging part of the video? I think there was many challenging things. Obviously, there was a lot of challenges. Thought that it was all over a couple of times, specifically in the loyalty test when we were all brought into the spotlight. I thought it was all over for me. But then when Eric said that this was a loyalty test, I knew right away that I have absolutely 100% loyalty for the things that I believe in. And I I knew in that moment, Tyler is asking me, between you and that, I'll pay you more than he'll pay you. A little light bulb in my head go, let's not forget who the master of all of this is. At the end of the day, I know my loyalty. I had my mind set on the prize. I'm tunnel visioned. When I want something, I'm all in. Roller coaster ride from the beginning. It was just so back and forth. Every challenge, I was like, I'm gonna be out this challenge. I just kept fighting, kept fighting, and kept trusting my gut. I was becoming delirious, so that was a challenge alone. My mind to match with my actions, find the hidden key in the matchbox. There was a moment where I had to take a step back, breathe, think this through. And in that moment, that's when I thought, okay, think about what Eric said. He said, it is closer than you think. And I was like, wait, instead of thinking outside the box, maybe we gotta think inside the box. There were so many challenges along the way. Frank Egan Nail, some point being the only girl was definitely a challenge because I knew that I had to do it for the girls. I think the audience loves a good cry. Most of you guys might think that the most challenging challenging part was choosing between the $10,000 and the job. Absolutely not. Yes, $10,000 would have been great choosing ARAC and the job, 100%. You could have put $50,000 on the line. Do you regret taking the job over the money? In this very moment, I do know that there is some things in the process of me working with them, you know, some things in the future. In that moment when I had to make that decision, I really wanted something that was a little bit more longevity, that opportunity. A lot of people are like, you're crazy, I would have took the money. But like I said, there is no money that would have replaced wanting to be a part of Arax team. What would you have done differently if you were in charge? No, God, no! What I would have done differently if I was in charge? Um, there's not much I think I would have done differently because everything kind of played out really well. You can put me on set for two weeks straight and I'll be there for that challenge because when you truly believe in something, time was just not a thing because I was doing what I love. Everything was great. Honestly, I had a wonderful time. I would not want to change anything. What was your first impression meeting Eric? In the moment, I had a million things going on in my head. <laughs> I just was trying to process everything. Everything was happening so quickly. I couldn't believe that I just won beyond myself and I was very vulnerable. Yeah, so meeting him, honestly an honor because perseverance, dedication. I have so much respect for somebody like that. Your favorite part of the whole entire experience. The moment I get to meet Eric Decker, I'm starstruck. What did you do during the Simo killings? I had no idea who the killer was. Simo didn't even want to tell me himself. When they called go, I knew in that moment in my heels that I was not going to get the knife. No way. So I knew that I had to make a plan. I had to do something quick. The more that I ran closer to the knife, the more I was putting myself at risk to being killed off. And I could not let that happen. The closer I get, the more I'm risking myself. If I run, you're going to hear which direction I run. Then I'm just going to be a target because you can hear me running. I drive dropped to my knees and I started crawling. I originally was gonna go hide under the table, but Teddy got to it before me, trying to get under the table and I knocked my head on the table, but I was trying to be so quiet. So I kept covering my mouth and I think I was so nervous because I thought I was gonna be out at this round. I was like, I'm gonna get caught because my heels, a light on my mic, thought I was gonna be seen. I'm in the corner and I'm just panicking. I couldn't get under the table and I was trying not to move around because I was making so much noise. So yeah, I just went and hid in the corner. I wanted to get as low as possible possible. So I just like laid out flat. I could hear footsteps coming towards me and I was like, I'm dead. And then when he called 10, I was like, <gasps> I can breathe. I made it through this challenge. One challenge down. I don't know how many more to go. I just didn't want to be out. I didn't want it to be over. Ripping stone. I don't even know if that's even a saying. What I mean by ripping stone, Tasmanian devil, and I am going to get through the hardest rock because I'm going to make sure I get through. You know what I mean? I had no idea that I was going to make it that far. There was many chances I could have been out. If there is one other person that you would have hoped to have seen one rather than yourself, who would it have been? So many people there really deserved it. What I truly wanted, I know 
how much this opportunity would have meant to me, what I would do with the opportunity. I was gonna take it and do something with it. And so I could only hope that if anyone else would have won, they would have done the same. But if there was somebody that I would have liked to have seen one if it wasn't me, obviously we all had an interest that brought us all there together. So we were all there under the same circumstances, the same interests. I wanna say it was a life-changing experience just because just all the great people that were there that I got to meet and the friendships that I got to make from it. I guess I'll say like a top five. Christmas would have been my number one winner over myself just because he was one of the OGs. I think there was moments that when I met Christmas at the beginning, immediately bonded. There was just a genuine connection. Both kind of looked at each other and were like, I hope it's just you and I at the end. If me and Christmas were the last two, that would have been a battle for the winning spot. I would have loved to see at the end, it would have been Christmas. Number two, Henry. We didn't get to talk much. We spoke about music and I love music. Music is the key to my soul. Music brings peace. Music brings peace to the heart. Music is so valuable to me. It's two minute conversation with Henry Adam. Pepperoni boxers, which I absolutely love. I felt like he really brought a lot of personality. To me, that alone, I would have loved to have seen somebody like that win. Next would have been Simo. Simo had so much drive. He had personality. He had energy, costume. He was Superman. He was a superhero. He should have been super winning. And last but not least, Heli. Very outgoing. Made it aware of who she was, what she was good at, what she wanted. Determination. Thought maybe she was going to make it farther than she did. Everything happens for a reason. So that's pretty much it. I don't know what I missed. I'm sure there's going to be so many more questions and answers. Thank you guys so much for dropping your questions. Those of you that gave me those questions. If you have any more questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you guys for tuning in. I love you. See you guys later. Bye.